look around you. You're likely to see something in motion. This is what my household was obsessed with last weekend. What a perfect physics lesson. Motion, motion, everywhere. But how can you tell that these cars are actually in motion? How would you define it? That's what we're going to talk about today. Reference points are used all the time to see if things are moving. Right now we have a large hill in the, in the background. If we want to know if any cars are moving, we can compare it to that large hill in the background. In this scenario, we know the boy is moving because we compare him to the trees in the background. The trees are our reference point. Some things move so quickly that we don't even realize they're moving. Light, for example, travels at a speed of about 300,000 kilometers per second. That's fast enough to go around the Earth seven times in just one second. The Earth itself also travels very quickly. At the equator, the rotational speed of the Earth is about 1,700 kilometers per hour. That's pretty fast, but it's a snail's pace compared to the speed at which the Earth orbits the Sun at about 107,000 kilometers per hour. So if it's going this fast, how come we don't notice? Because the gravitational pull is so strong for us to be like falling all over the place. That's pretty darn fast. Because we're still. That's fast. Because we're still. Because of gravity. Because of gravity. Don't ask me. Because we're just amazing like that. Okay. <laughs> if the Earth is traveling 1,056 miles per hour, how come we can't feel that? Because because of gravity. gravity. And we're sitting and down. Of, we're sitting down, and the this Earth and is traveling. The, so fast and the that law, we don't even know it. No, and the Next law, question. <laughs> energy. If the Earth's traveling 1,056 miles per hour, how come we can't feel it? <laughs> <laughs> it's because know. it's so big that no, when it travels it. around the sun... We're so tiny in a speck of big. I have the an answer. <laughs> yeah, because it's so big, so when it travels around the sun, it's like this? harder to feel. It's kind of like when you're like in the car and then like when you see the sun and you're driving by. Because we're traveling the same speed as the Earth because we're on the Earth. But I'm not moving right now. Yes, you are. You just don't know it. We don't notice the speed of the Earth's rotation or our orbit around the sun because everything around us is traveling at exactly the same speed. It's similar to when you're flying at very high speeds on a plane because everything around you is traveling at the same speed. You don't notice how fast you are going. Relative motion is going to depend on your point of view. An object is going to be in motion if its distance from a reference point is changing. If you stand perfectly still, are you in motion? From your point of view, no. But if viewed from space, you would be traveling about 1,000 miles per hour with the rotation of the Earth. You calculate speed every day and you don't even know it. Right now, I know that I'm traveling 40 miles an hour because my speedometer on my car tells me that. To calculate speed, you only need to know two things. The distance that you're traveling and how long it takes you to get there. Let's investigate this idea of speed a little bit more. Speed is a rate, meaning it's comparing two things. It's the distance traveled by an object divided by that time it takes to travel that distance. So here's the formula for speed. Speed equals distance over time. So the units that we use for speed are typically meters per second, uh, represented m slash s. Other units that you might see is kilometers per hour. That would be something for, you know, bigger units, faster units like a car traveling or an airplane or a space shuttle. Um, you would use kilometers per hour, km um, slash hr. Feet per second would be like how far you might walk, uh, how many feet per second can I walk to my locker um, but again feet is going to be used um, in the American system that's not metric so um, kilometers is what you're going to hear around the world except for the U.S. as 
what it, what also is not metric is miles per hour and miles per hour we use in the U.S. all the time. Um, we typically use it for again things like cars or, or planes or trains. Um, not really for smaller things like me walking to my mailbox. We wouldn't measure it in miles per hour. So feet and miles are not metric, but kilometers are um, and meters are. And we will in class typically use meters per second. Uh, average speed is going to be your total distance that you um, walked or you, you know, traveled over your total time. So if you're looking at multiple trips and you want to find the average speed of all those trips, you would take the total distance of all those trips divided by the total time. So here's an example. If I had 32 kilometers in my one um, case in 13 kilometers in my next case, uh, that'd be a total of 45 kilometers. If the first case only lasted two hours and the second one was one hour, you'd have a total of three hours that you were looking at. My average speed would be total distance over total time, so I would have an average speed of 15 kilometers per hour. So let's go ahead and look at a graph, um, what average speed would look like. So in this graph right here, my blue line represents my actual speed. So as the time goes by, you see that I, um, at the beginning part of my journey, I wasn't going as fast. Um, I wasn't covering that much distance as the time went by. But in the second part of my journey, you see that the slope is a little bit steeper. That shows you that I covered a lot more distance in a shorter amount of time. Uh, I kind of taper off in the third unit of uh, time right here. And in the fourth unit of time, I again, I slow down a little bit. So that's my actual um, path now or my travel time and the distance that I went. Uh, the red line is going to show you an average speed. So it's taking all those distances, adding them up and dividing by the total um, time that it takes for, for all those different sections of my journey. This other graph on the other side of my slide shows you something that you could see in a lab. So if I had point um, destination A, okay, this is a distance time graph because that's what we measure speed in. And in this case, my distance is measured in miles and my time is hours. So miles per hour would be my units. Now, if you look at this graph, it's very simple, but this is something you would see in a lab or um, using an iPad app or something like that. You see that as I... As I travel away from destination A, from point A, um, my distance increases as the time goes by. And that's a pretty steep slope, so I'm getting, you know, I'm getting uh, further and further away from A in not a whole lot of time. So I'm driving pretty quick, or I'm running pretty quick. Now, when the graph plateaus like this, I'm not covering any distance, any miles. I'm not moving, but time is still going by. Note that on the x-axis. And when my graph goes back, to the x-axis, that's showing that I'm going back to point A, returning to point A. So this is just another way that you can see a distance time graph. And whenever you have distance on the y and time on the x, you know that it's a speed graph. Okay, let's investigate instantaneous speed. Instantaneous speed would be uh, speed that you would record at that specific second. So whatever time you are um, measuring it at, that would be your time that you use in the formula, and whatever distance that you're at, um, we can measure the instantaneous speed right at that moment. So, for instance, if you're having a race between um, the tortoise and the hare, right, uh, they're running to the finish line, if you were to pause it right at a split second, you could get their instantaneous speed um, that they're traveling. <laughs> Tonight, our special coverage begins with the race between Mel the Rabbit and Tank the Turtle. Stacy, before you cover the highlights of the race, what sort of personal challenges did each competitor have to overcome to win the race? Well, Derek, Tank the Tortoise had a considerable challenge with speed, and the hare, Mel, had to overcome his challenge with overall average speed. Mm, how do you mean, Stacy? Well, the hare showed incredible speed getting off to an early lead right from the start. But Mel stopped several times along the race course, changing his speed consistently from the beginning of the race to the end. 
What was Mel stopping for? Well, Mel stopped to talk to Mr. Deer, eat a carrot, and even took a nap at one point along the race course. He took a nap? Incredible. With speed like his, I'm sure he had plenty of time to dabble. What about Tank? The tortoise was a different story. Once Tank got up to speed, his speed remained exactly the same, constant from beginning to end. So Tank had a constant velocity? No, actually, Tank changed his velocity consistently throughout the race as the race course changed direction. While Tank's speed didn't change, his direction changed as he stayed on the race course. And that's what velocity is, your speed and direction. So what about Mel, and how did his velocity change? Mel's velocity, like Tank's, changed throughout the race course. But Mel's speed was variable, and Tank's was constant. So Mel won the race. No, Mel would have won the race if his average speed over the race course had been faster than Tank's. But the tortoise won by less than a second. Thanks, Stacy. Well, there you have it, folks. If you have a faster speed than the turtle... Tortoise, you need a faster average speed over your competitor to win the race. Right. There you have it, folks. We're out of here. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed our lesson on speed. See you in class.